All right, welcome. Today we are talking about cutter compensation using G codes. You know, I'm a G code guy. Uh, actually, um, I don't have anything against conversational. In fact, there is uh, the shop I have has more conversational machines than anything. But I started machining back in the 90s where there were G codes, and I'm very fortunate because G codes have no end. And what I mean by that is, I mean, you, you can go on and on and on. And when you know your G codes and your parametric programming or your macro programming, there's no end to what you can do. Not to mention uh, G codes revolve around CAD CAM softwares, meaning when you can build a CAD image or a solid image in an engineering department, you can generate tool path using G codes off of these solid images and using algorithms and such that they have right now that are just crazy. You can create random shapes that conversational machines really can't do for you. Uh, I, I Again, I have nothing against the conversational machines. And what is a conversational machine? Well, it's a machine that kind of has a conversation with you, except it's, it's fill in the blank. In other words, it'll ask you what you want. Hey, what tool do you want to use? Okay, you want to drill here? How far do you want to go down, right? So, so it'll ask you questions, but when it gets real detailed or you want to do some random, uh, no rhyme or rhythm or reason why they want these dimensions, these cam drives or these three dimensional uh, contours that don't have any concentricity or any, any, everything's all random, G codes will do it for you, especially incorporating your softwares. But let's get back to this cutter compensation, G codes. Uh, what does this mean? G41. Now, G41 is your left cutter comp, and I'll explain what that means. And it's the most common type of cutter comp. Uh, G42 is your right. I, out of 25 years of using comp, I may have used that less than five times. And I'll show you again. But that cancel cutter comp is G40. Similar to your G80, it's that you're telling the machine, hey, I'm done comping for this tool. Go back to normal. And your D is... Uh, it's, it's every G41 or G42 needs to be assigned, a, a, you need to assign a D with it. And a D, to, to make it easy, will represent the diameter. So it will know, and when you set your tool up, you'll put the diameter in. It'll know the diameter, therefore know the radius, and know how much to compensate it. So let's get into this. I have, I have a program right here that we used for our last video, Lines and Arcs and Profiling. So I want to stick with the same print so to keep everything simple. But notice, you can understand this code if you watched my videos and did a little research. You can understand uh, this code right here. We have uh, starting out at X0Y0, zero, zero, a spindle of 1,200, come, uh, coming down to three inches above your part, wrapping down to 100 thousandths and feeding into minus five thousandths into the part at a feet of 10 inches a minute. Now, in the world we live in, this is going to hit that part. And you're actually going to make a gulge right here in your part. And why? Because you just told it to go right there, and it thinks, this, and it went exactly where you told it to, and just like you would if you drilled a hole. Except when you want to profile, you're going to gouge the part out. Okay. Before I get too far with this, what I mean by this, I want to really make it simple for you. So let's take a look at this slide right here, so we can better understand it. This block right here is our part. Now, if I'm standing there with an ML like this, and I plug in all the numbers on that part, the piece is going to actually be smaller because the radius of the tool is cutting out anything extra that I have from the center line. And what do I mean by that? That's no comp right here. That end mill right there is no comp. So you're cutting your part smaller than it needs to be. Left, G41 right there, move your end mill to the left side of the part. What does this tell us? That tells you to the left side of your wall that you want to cut, G41, all right? Now, if we want, and that's the most common again, G42 would be the right side. You're moving it to the right side of your part, okay? Which is very uncommon, very rare. Let's go back to where we started here. Right here, we have our program that we started with right here. We're going around and we are moving in this direction. But if we do that, look what's going to happen. We're going to actually cut our part smaller, you see? We don't want to do that. We got to compensate that tool. We got to tell that machine, hey, I want to comp that. We want to get up here. So it compensates for it. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. Notice I went back to the beginning, but I went off the part. Okay, 
I'm off the part right here. Why am I doing that? Because cutter compensation needs space to ramp on or approach into your part. So I'm getting away an inch and I'm getting away an inch in both axes to make it easy. And now it at least needs the radius of the tool. The older ones I think needed even the diameter. But you at least need to get away from where you want to approach an inch. That's why I changed these numbers because I'm going to incorporate my G41. How am I going to do that? Watch. That, that tool is going to move in like that and there's your code right there. You're going to say I want you to stay to the left of that wall and I want you to use the D1 compensating for what you've plugged your tool diameter in and go right to your X0 Y0. Now you can plug your true numbers in and the machine will automatically take away that radius performing that perfect profile that you need. Let's look at that again. You back off and you move in. You see that? And the G41 will, will, will uh, be active now. And we'll move along here and you have your X3, three point, all right? And that's what it, the code will look like. And you come down here, Y minus one, and you move over here with your G2, okay? And you got your radius. It actually won't go through the part. That's PowerPoint. G1 to X0, and you move back up here to Y0. What do we do now? We need to, we need to turn this thing off. Watch that code. Turn it off and go back out to X minus 1, Y1. Get away from your part. Let me show you again. That's what's going to happen. Plug that G code in right there, and you're off your part. You've canceled your, G, your uh, G40. You've canceled your uh, compensation with your G40. And you're off your part. There's your code. You've got your basic beginning, like we talked about. You incorporate your G41. You go, then you can plug, uh, enter in your real numbers in your program, making everything simple. Ramp back off, and we've got the basic end program, like we've talked about in so many past videos. Study this, take notes, take pictures. Um, that's 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 the long and the short of it of cutter compensation. Thank you for watching. Hey, keep uh, look up my bundle version five. Great software wonderful stuff it's designed i'm just starting it out you're thinking about starting a shop or you have a little small manufacturing shop it doesn't have to be machining this stuff is wide open it allows you to edit things on the fly it saves things for you puts routes job sheets uh, stock lists the whole thing but thank you for watching look me up shoot me an email i'll send you a free copy of it uh to play around with again thanks for watching see you next time